Route three. The daycare is on Route three. There's a preschool there too, right? And what was that other place called? Wellspring Cave, was it? It's on that same route. Welcome everybody to the breeding center. It's right next to the preschool. I guess it doubles as a human breeding center as well as a Pokemon one. That's gross. The preschool half consists of a lot of boring battles. So let's start with the Pokemon daycare. I'm the daycare man. We take care of precious Pokemon of other trainers. If you'd like us to raise your Pokemon, have a word with my wife. Don't you have a bicycle? Can you even ride one? I hate kids. Go, go, people who ride bicycles are so cool, woo! Sometimes I'll let my big brother play with Pokemon too. Breeding was completely overhauled for Black 2 and White 2, and it's the birth of modern breeding mechanics as we know them. Whenever you breed Pokemon, in short, the offspring will be the species of the mother and have moves of the father. This was useful once upon a time to get TM moves onto multiple Pokemon by just simply doing breeding chains and getting the move Earthquake onto Pokemon that were compatible with that TM, even though you only got one TM. Modern day, it's a lot more useful for things known as egg moves, moves that Pokemon can only learn through breeding. We saw this before with Crawdont, for instance, getting Dragon Dance. Another famous example of that would be breeding a Tyranitar with a male dragon so you can get the move Dragon Dance on a Larvitar. That's a really essential move that's helped it out in competitive a lot over the years. What I'm gonna do here, we have two girls on our team, Jade and Harmony. I have purposely not researched this because I wanted to be surprised. Let's see if any of our team members can breed. So we're gonna try Jade. And then I guess we'll kind of play matchmaker and just kind of see if uh, her and McFly take to each other, for instance. I don't think they will, but we can try. I don't know egg groups off the top of my head. You can see how they handle, you can see how they handle this by talking to this guy. Your Jade and McFly are doing fine. Do prefer to play with other Pokemon more than each other, so that means they are not compatible. Any message besides this one, and they will breed. If he says they don't seem to like each other much, they will. They just will take a little bit longer. Ah, uh, Jade and Aiden aren't compatible. I was gonna call their pairing Jaden, <laughs> if they were. Personally, I find it a shame how locked away breeding is in this game. In basically every other Pokemon game, including Black and White 1, it's available to you almost from the start, yet in this one, they didn't go that route. They made it so that you have to do so many other things, basically everything else if you want to just go tackle those story objectives in the order that they hand them to you in. It's not for until after you catch Kurum that they first give you the, hey, you might want to head off toward Nuvema Town, and that's when you would first get this. <gasps> Jaden Lasagna! <laughs> Jade and Lasagna are compatible! Oh, that's cute! Maybe they bonded over practicing Earthquake together or something like that. They have been doing a lot of double battles together, uh, specifically in the battle subway. <laughs> what you want to do is just kind of ride around for a while, and every so often, based on number of steps, there's a chance of it happening once every 256 steps, I believe, um, there's a shot that they will make an egg. Oh. Hey, Blaze, come here! Ah, it's you! You're raising your Pokemon. That's so nice that he calls out to you. Yeah, I want it. Okay, so that's one pairing. I've tried Jade with everyone else. She was only compatible with Lasagna. So I think now I'm gonna take Jade back and we'll see if anybody is compatible with Harmony. Pokemon gain one experience point per step while they're in the daycare. It's not at all an efficient way of raising up Pokemon. Pokemon will never evolve in the daycare either, so you will need to level them up one time on your own to accomplish that. Lasagna and Harmony. Okay, good. I was gonna say, Lasagna shouldn't get around that much. He's a freaking square. Good news, everyone. McFly is single. Harmony is not compatible with anyone. I guess she just doesn't need any of these clowns in her life. I'm really happy for Jade and Lasagna, though. That is so cute that it was specifically those two. Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 made history. It is the birth of modern breeding mechanics as we know them. So if you watch this video, you can apply basically everything you learn in it to future games in the series. If you've ever been perhaps maybe intimidated by getting into breeding mechanics, never really understood how it worked, we gotcha. 
As for actually hatching eggs, the long straightaway right next to the breeding center is a good way to go. You do get the advantage of the guy calling out to you every single time that there's an egg, so if you're trying to hatch stuff while breeding more stuff, this is the way to go. But there's one continuous stretch that shines above the rest. Sky Arrow Bridge. Stay aligned with the center, hold up, hold down, you will do more steps and have to pay less attention than any other place in Unova. The Pokemon you want in your giant chasm is found in the giant chasm. What I'm trying to say <laughs> is that Ditto is the best Pokemon for breeding if you don't care about egg moves and just merely want Pokedex completion. Ditto is compatible with absolutely any Pokemon that can breed. It would be a wise move to go out, catch a few Ditto, get ones that have beneficial natures such as Modest, Adamant, or my favorite, Jolly, maybe Bold while you're at it. Neutral natures also can have their place depending on what Pokemon we're talking about, so get Dittos that have natures that you think will be commonly helpful. There's Ditto. I asked about Ditto in an earlier video asking if its current species affects catch rate and you don't inherit the catch rate of the species. You actually did up until I think Gen 4-ish. That was a thing at one point in time that they eventually fixed. Um, but Ditto's current type does have an impact on it. So Ditto is currently considered a bug type and he would be easier to catch with a netball. Wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, I'm in trouble. Harmony is my last Pokemon and it knows Rock Slide. If that thing crits at all, I'm dead. All of our Pokemon are like in some way weak to the moves this thing learned. Uh, <laughs> uh this is bad. One, two, three. Thank God. My Ditto is a serious nature, neutral. I'll take it. Now that we have Ditto, the first Pokemon I recommend anybody breed is their starter. It's unfortunately kind of hard to get a hold of starters for some stupid, stupid reasons. I'll get into this more in a later video, but just know you probably want to have eggs of your starter to trade away. I want a Ditto because there's a few Pokemon that you want to breed in order to complete seeing every single Pokemon in the Univadex. The first of these is Breed the Bayonet. There are no wild Shuppet anywhere in Unova and there is no trainer that has them. So you will definitely need to breed this one in order to get it. A common problem Pokemon is Vanillite. I don't know where I saw this one, but I've had multiple playthroughs where I didn't get one. So catching a Vanillish and breeding it to get Vanillite might be a good move. I'd recommend breeding Rufflet or Volibi, whichever you have. There's guaranteed encounters for their evolved forms on Route 4, but their pre-evolved forms are surprisingly rare Pokemon and their version exclusives at that. So you'll probably want to breed one for yourself and also trade one away for the other one. The trainer battles around here are a joke, so I thought we could do a lot of boring fights while we go over a lot of boring information. Nah, I think this stuff is actually pretty interesting. I just, I like saying stuff. It's what I do. Making eggs. The most important item for you to know about when making eggs is the Everstone. Starting with Black 2 and White 2, a Pokemon holding an Everstone will always pass on its nature to its offspring, rather than just merely increasing the chances. If both parents are holding an Everstone, then it's a coin flip between the two, be warned. Ability is inherited from the mother 80% of the time. This is based on ability slots, since some Pokemon change abilities when evolving. For instance, a Seedra can have Poison Point, but a Horsey and Kingdra do not. Be mindful of which abilities each form has, so that you can figure out what ability you're gonna get. Hidden abilities, however, are special. They can only be passed down by the mother with the same odds of 80%, but it will never be passed on if bred specifically with a Ditto. This only ever happened this once, as it's been allowed ever since Pokemon X and Y. Hatching eggs. The steps required to hatch an egg can be reduced by half with either flame body or magma armor as always. A Pokemon that you probably have that has flame body for its ability is Volcarona. I'd recommend it pretty highly for this purpose. But these steps can be further reduced by getting Joint Avenue to rank 15, which unlocks nursery shops. These sell incubators, which at level one will increase the rate of hatching by 5%. 
Level two is 30%. Level three reduces the remaining steps by 5,120. You're likely to hatch just about any egg that way. Level four reduces it by 7,680 steps, and level five reduces it by 10,240 steps. Level five is guaranteed to instantly hatch any legitimately obtainable egg besides Pseudo-Legendaries, Happini, Chansey, Lapras, Munchlax, Snorlax, Unknown, Whalmer, Relicanth, Fione, Basculin, and Alamomola. You'll require about 200 more steps to hatch any of those, but it basically instantly hatches any egg. This is a minor point on the note of reducing the number of steps to hatch an egg, but I kind of feel like magma armor's main use is breeding and not its secondary use. Has anyone ever seriously built a team around freeze immunity or swapped into a Pokemon with magma armor to avoid getting frozen? And if they have, was it even one-tenth as often as they used it for breeding their competitive team that we're talking about? Some species of Pokemon are incapable of breeding. Any legendary or mythical Pokemon that is not Manaphy cannot. Manaphy will give you a special Pokemon called Fione, which is a mythical Pokemon in its own right. Not kind of towards completion or anything, but having two mythicals is definitely more interesting than having one. And then anything classified as a baby Pokemon cannot breed. Your level one Tepig that you just bred is completely fine to go and... I, there's no way I can end the sentence without it sounding disgusting, but you understand what I'm saying. But uh, any sort of Pokemon species is classified as a baby, like say a Munchlax or a Bonsly, that cannot. And in the sandbox we get a rare candy! Nice useful item for raising up Pokemon. Fitting. We get a free Pokemon Center inside of the daycare right next door. Just in case you're doing any battling while you're waiting on some eggs to start. We don't raise little ones, we help them grow. That's what I think, and the daycare couple next door feels the same. Nice guys from Stride and City gave this preschool its Pokemon. These used to belong to the gym leaders in that town. Are you aware of the Pokemon ability Flame Body? Yes, I just talked about that. I often see Vulc... Oh, you mean you see trainers with Volcarona around and you're coming Rare Candy again! Well, that's just great, nice. I want it gonna be a Pokemon when I grow up. Yeah, and I'm gonna be a Blitzball. From unlocking breeding, you have unlocked an entire other side mode and might not have even known it. Calm down, I know eggs are exciting. Spin. A group of up to five people, an unusual number of players, can participate in a spin trade. You each must have an egg in order to do this. And with the touch screen, you can tap all sorts of buttons, just doing this. Everybody can tap this in order to make the eggs jump. And you can just kind of have eggs land on various things. It stops when you don't know. I ended up with Flint's egg. It's a nice way that you can trade with friends if you're not really sure what you want to trade. If you just want something from each other, but you're not really sure what, I like this mode for that. Speaking of trading and breeding as one, there is one other thing that I'd like to teach you about. If you have two Pokemon that are obtained from separate language regions, let's say you're in North America, your language is set to English, and you want to trade with somebody who's in Europe and has their language as Germany. Or Germany, their language is German. A lot of digs at Germany in the series, I don't mean that. Anyway, if you were to do that and breed those two Pokemon from different language versions of the game, you would have improved odds of getting a shiny Pokemon. Here's what those chances are on screen. This is commonly referred to as the Masada method. It was introduced in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl to play with the fact that those games were the first online games in the series, and it was not widely known about until Junichi Masada talked about it on his personal blog. Now on to the last bit of breeding, the medals! What else would it have been? I'm doing terrific! Signboard savvy. That doesn't have to do with breeding. Can the next one, please? Yeah, I don't look stupid now. Egg beginner. Spin trade whiz. You get that for spin trading 10 times. You, there's no sort of egg gifts during the main story, so until you get the Happini egg, you don't have access to that side mode. Oh, if you're curious, the egg that you get in Imbasa City hatches into a Happini. Yeah. There's a medal for leaving a Pokemon at the daycare 100 individual times. This doesn't take all that long if you're going in, swapping out Pokemon, and then taking Ditto out, and then going and doing egg moves. It adds up before you know it. And then there's medals for hatching eggs, four of them in fact, with the highest being hatching 100 eggs. Since I have to hatch 100 eggs for these medals eventually, 
I had an idea that I've been excited to do for probably about two years now since I first got this, uh, since I first got it. I'm going to MAGFest soon, a convention that is in Maryland right near Washington, D.C. And I will be activating my sea gear at this, as I always do, so that we can get each other on Joint Avenue and develop things further, and you can get medals and I can get medals. But if you want to ask me for a trade, I would be happy to give you one of Jade and Lasagna's children. And even if you're not going to MAGFest, I go to lots of other conventions, you can ask me, I'll probably still have one. There's also medals for link trades and adding friend codes, so we can get even more medals than just the one by doing this. So you and I can get some medals in the process as well. It just occurred to me that these kids probably have really good moves because there's a lot of crossover between Crustal and Flygon. Wow, level one trapping with Earthquake and Rock Slide and these things have base 100 attack. Dude, this would be so powerful to start a new game with. The last Pokemon I decided to breed was Timpole. You cannot catch these in the wild with the exception of ends, and there's someone in Opelucid City that wants to see one. Aha, it's probably, I love Timpole more than anyone. I'm a Timpole fanatic. If I just had one more Timpole, they would sing together. If you have a Timpole with me, would you show me? Thanks. Could you show me a Timpole then? I'm Timpole excited. Finally, I have six Timpole in one place. Okay, Timpole, show us those cute, lovely voices of yours. Oh my God, mine has derpy eyes. It's like all wall-eyed compared to the other ones. Ah, that was a wonderful choir. My love for Timpole just gets deeper and deeper. If it wasn't for you, I would've never heard that song. Really, seriously, thanks. If you want to hear the Temple's, the Temple's Temple song again sometime, bring it back, a Temple back to me, okay? No item for that, it was just a little cute thing. Maybe I don't recommend it so highly after all, you've already seen the scene now. That's everything you'd ever want to know about breeding. Um, if you just jumped into this video for a guide, uh, you tune into the middle of a Let's Play and we're gonna continue going on. I kinda hope that people pass these videos around as guides for those kinds of things for anybody who's curious. Welcome to Striaton City. Well, I'll be! Those are some sparkling gym badges, and you have eight of them, too! Those badges shine so brightly, and it's like you're gleaming as much as they are! Yeah, I'm doing stupid voices for a bunch of characters, so, uh, yeah, you can be certain that it's a Let's Play if you weren't sure about it before. Max Elixir! And then, I think there's, like, hidden items around here if you could surf. That was the case in the previous one. We got hedges trimmed in the shape of Panseer, or, uh, sorry, not Panseer, um... Uh, Pansage, Pikachu, P Dove. Yeah, all P names. I want to go Dowsing Machine. No. What has this fisherman got over here? Is he a trainer or has he got something else for us? Hmm, I'd like to give you this Big Pearl. Hell yeah. To live quietly and do lots of fishing and truly live my ideal existence. I had to go in and out of that breeding center and fly places and go do other things so that I could breed things properly, like showing you that clip of Skyro Bridge. And not being able to just freaking fly to Stride and City was so arduous in making this video because I didn't like want to do things out of order. Summer's so far away. I want to see it again when I I want to see again the sight I saw that night. What did you see, buddy? Huh? How are you gonna share a hot summer night? Hmm. I thought there was something here that happened at nighttime, which is why I chose to play this at night. It doesn't seem to be happening though. PP up. I wanna give that to some of my Pokemon. I got some good moves that don't really have a lot of PP and I can see that perhaps stalling a Crustal Sweep or something like that. So that could be a good use of that. A lot of hidden items all around this fountain that looks like the Pokemon Crystal logo, by the way. Here, I'll see that. Yeah, it does. Oh, we got Panseer and Panpour over here. Technical machines can be used over and over, right? I tried so many different things. It's sure hard to decide, huh? I'd like to eventually collect all of them as we go and get a floor store. Nice. And that looks to be about everything in the super dense area except for this yellow shard. And we've just gone around the fountain. We haven't even seen the friggin' town yet. So at night here, sometimes, I guess, I'm not sure what decides it. Maybe it is summer. There can be three stun fists just kind of laying around. They don't do anything other than just become the talk of the town. It's a possible anime reference to the former gym leader of Striaton City being in the anime and having a stun fist there. Still haven't defeated Striaton City's gym leaders, but that's all right. I'm gonna become a strong trainer. They'll wanna challenge me. From the factories, oh, once busy days, many dreams still linger in the dream yard. A Pokemon led there by those dreams may be somewhere about. 
Er, um, grass type Pokemon are weak against fire type moves. That's why Silent has trouble winning against Chili. I wish he was named Seelan and not Silen. I always thought it was so awkward. I was named after cilantro. They're all named after the different parts of uh, salsa, and yet, for some reason, it's pronounced Silen. Oh my, you have eight gym badges? Why, you must be very strong. What, I wonder what uh, would separate trainers who both have eight gym badges. Hi, hi, let's play Pokemon Rock, Paper, Scissors. I'm really good at it. I've beaten all my friends. Are you ready? Here we go. Rock, shoot. Ah, I lost, my win streak's over. We got a fun fest mission for that gong show of beating a small child at a luck based game. Hope you feel proud of yourself. There's a model I've been uh, there's a model who I've been a fan of for years. Her name's Elisa, and her Pokemon are strong too. Huh? You babbler? You're really something. I like how all this early game dialogue that these guys say in the first game is flipped on its head, and they react to you having all eight of the gym badges if you're here in this one. It's a neat thing of making like the first area in one game, the last area in another, and adapting it that way. It's amusing if you remember all this text and you read it as much as I did. Sometimes I look through my PC box and pick, pick out an interesting Pokemon to raise. There are so many things you'll never know until you raise a certain Pokemon. Indeed. Lasagna is a great example of that. A Pokemon that I discounted as bad, and you guys convinced me that they were good. It just I, I really am glad that I've had a chance to train a Pokemon that I would have otherwise never trained. You always find the most unexpected things. I recently learned that Gallade and Iron Valiant are great Pokemon to train for catching other Pokemon because they learn False Swipe, they learn Heal Pulse. Um, I, I think Iron Valiant does not learn Heal Pulse, but they both learn False Swipe, and they both get like a lot of moves that are good for catching other Pokemon. They get Skill Swap. I hear uh, people have felt the presence of mysterious Pokemon in the Dream Yard lately. Must have taken a lot of resolve for Silent Chili and Crest to resign as gym leaders and leave to go retain, retrain themselves. Ah, this place. I don't really know what it means, but the current Seeger version is 3.0. <laughs> Bill, Lynette, Bebe, and Amanita. They're the admins of the Pokemon storage system. This is a machine that, uh, upgrade. It involves Porygon into Porygon 2 if you equip it and trade it. Uh, this machine was the room where you would access the Pokemon Dream Radar before. Oh. Um, not so anymore. The bed's still here. I guess these people bought this house and they thought that machine tied the room together so well that they didn't want to move it. Either that or they knew that it was nuclear powered and that it would probably blow up the whole damn town if they disassembled it. Oh, trainer. That's all I got, but don't be shy. Take it with you. Great ball. Got plenty of those, but I, yeah, I can never have too many of them. Great balls have been helpful to me a lot. After many battles, you start to see, uh, see, start to see more deeply and understand things. That's why I know exactly what my husband is thinking. Whenever you age, you get a Pokemon battles of your Pokemon by your side. If you use the internet, there are many people to battle. Wow, an old timer actually knows what the internet is. I'm so used to my older relatives never learning how to use a computer and telling me that it's just easier to make me fix it rather than me teaching them how to use it. Uh, I plan on going abroad uh, again and doing some Pokemon battling. In other regions, you discover a lot of, about things you took for granted. What sort of nicknames do you give your Pokemon? I like to give, uh, what I like to do is give on Pokemon names that end in Inkton. Like, Beef Wellington and, uh... Sky Farrington. I don't know. I, I was trying to come up with another name besides Wellington that ends in Ington, and that was all I could come up with, and that's not even a name. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay, so that's Striaton City just about done. We got this. The gym is gone, but the Dream Yard still bustles with trainers looking to improve. I think uh, what I'm going to do here is before we go in... In every Pokemon game, there's that one gym that gives a ton of money and you just kind of know it by heart after playing enough times, and this is that one. And it's not even a gym anymore, it's a former gym. This is a delicious restaurant where you can also enjoy Pokemon battles. Thanks for that. Bye. <laughs> just turned around and ran after saying that. I want to go to the Pokemon Center really quick. I just realized, oh, there's no Mr. Metal. Uh, technical Machine Department. Yeah, we can buy Calm Mind. I definitely want that. And Bulk Up. Both good buffing moves. One is attack and defense. The other is special attack, special defense. Good to have. I've begun buying up tons and tons of things. Oh, Grisadia flowers. Since early times in Sinnoh, people made a bouquet of Grisadia flowers to give someone to show their feelings of appreciation. Yes, yes. This is one of the rare things you can actually do with a mythical Pokemon from another region. If we were to go and get Shaman out of the box and talk to her again. Oh, Shaman. When it comes to Shaman, Grisadia flowers are important. I have a lot of Grisadia flowers, so let me share one with you. Get a swanky cutscene a la Godstone, all the same. 
Since early times in Sinnoh, people made a bouquet of Gracidia flowers to give to someone to show their feelings of appreciation. Isn't that interesting? By giving Grisid a Gracidia bouquet, you don't have to say a word and someone will know how grateful you are. Quite a delightful custom. Like all items that play that swanky cutscene or whatever I said. We may use that in our inventory, go to a party and... What? Oh no, it's night time! No! I'll be right back. Swing! You feel that sunshine? Now let's use it. Isn't she beautiful? Change for May. I was just complaining about this earlier today. Just call it form. It says here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get really petty about this. National Pokedex. Scroll down. Uh, scroll up, rather. There. In the in-game text, it says forms. No e. But then when you go into it, it's like land for May. Just get rid of the freaking E. You rename starter Pokemon to first partner Pokemon, which literally no one was asking you to do, and you can't make this consistent. Be a much better change than that. I'm just saying. I don't know why this upsets me so much. It just does. Yeah, there's Shaman Sky form. Shaman will become a grass flying type in that form. It gets access to uh, new moves such as Air Slash. Kind of like it's regular cry a little better. I'm not really the biggest shaman guy or sky shaman person. Um, oh, I actually kind of like how it hopped up there and it was all light on its feet and floated in the air for a second. Okay, maybe I do have something to like about it. So shaman gets that. It also will cease to be this form mid battle if it gets frozen, even though it's quad weak to ice anyway and would be so unlikely to ever have that happen. Here's the animation for that. It's basically never seen in game ever. So there you go. Your Shaman ought to be Skyform all the time if you can help it. It's just objectively better in so many ways. It has better stats. Land Shaman is pure grass type. It has just such middling stats that it really isn't all that impressive. It's one of the most mediocre mythical Pokemon they've ever made. Whereas Sky Shaman definitely has a more defined role. So I was thinking about challenging the three right now, going in there, but I don't have Crustle in the party. That would make things very difficult. But what I was going to say is... I don't think I really want to do that. I feel like we've done a lot already and we could probably just kind of stand to take things easy for a little bit. Instead, I think this is the only building we haven't been into. We'll just stop by the trainer skill, uh, school really quick. The wide lens and zoom lens are very similar. Here's the difference. The wide lens boosts accuracy by 10%. The zoom lens boosts by 20%, but only if the holder moves after the target. I was confused about this for a long time, thinking those two had the same effect because their descriptions were not all that specific. Um, mysterious pairs called abilities. Some even work on a Pokemon is not in battle. For instance, with Pokemon with suction cup or sticky hold abilities in front of your party, you're more likely to get a bite when fishing. That's cool. Simple quiz. Here's the question. Persum cures skin for fusion. Swagger raise attack, but also causes confusion. Here's the price for you. Persim berries, how did you know? Thank you. Here's coming to use double battle. Have one of your Pokemon hold the Persim berry. Then if the other one you swagger on that Pokemon, its attack will go up and the berry will heal the confusion immediately so they can hit the opponent harder. Many possible combinations in a double battle. It's possible that your Pokemon can't learn Swords Dance and that would be the way to go. Uh, you look like you know a lot about Pokemon. Could you use knowledge to help me out? Hey, thanks. Here's what I'm wondering. Usually ground type moves can't hit a Pokemon with the ability to levitate. I'm sure there's some way to do it. I just can't for the life of me figure out how. I have several ideas, but I can't decide which one to try. That's why I want to get your opinion on the matter. First, I'd like some advice about items. I want to use Trick or Switcher to give an item to a Pokemon that has levitate ability so I can hit it with ground type moves. After much consideration, I thought the Iron Ball might work. I'm not sure, though. What do you think? Is Iron Ball a good idea? I think that does weigh down a flying Pokemon. Oh, yes, sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> Passing on the Iron Ball. Yeah, Ground Types will hit it. Okay, what next? Moves. If I want to use a certain move on a Pokemon Levitate ability and use a Ground Type move on it, then it, I think it could work. Should I use Smackdown, Gravity, or get All of those work. I like Smackdown the best, though, from my Oros speedrunning days. Uh, that'll knock a Flying Type Pokemon down with Levitate out of the air, so Ground Type moves will work on it. What next? Abilities. Some abilities that let you hit Pokemon that'll take, uh, that's probably gonna be Turbo Blaze, Terra Volt, and uh, Mold Breaker. That's gonna be the three options, I bet. Yeah! Woo! Terra Volt. Yeah, all you gotta do is catch a Zekrom, buddy, and you'll be golden. Viva Terra Volt. Thanks, I'll be prepared for the ability to levitate. Prepare for the, any more anti-levitate tactics. Uh, wait, what? You wanna battle me? I didn't know this guy battled, shoot. 
Maybe I just didn't want to answer all of these questions and I was impatient all the other times. You have four Pokemon. Rotom. Well, I don't have any way of dealing with Levitate. Oh, I made a bad call. This is not a good matchup. <laughs> uh, I could lay down that light screen I was always talking about. You probably got Shadow Ball as your alternate move that you're going to use on me because there's no way you're going to hit me with Electric. Oh. I pity you, man. I pity you so hard. We're just going to stay in. That tells me that you don't have a better option and you want to try to paralyze me. Doing Reflect... Okay, kind of smart, not gonna lie. But I think even with half damage, this should still knock you out. And if you got other Pokemon that are weak to, uh... If you got a Flygon on your team, I could really go for Ice Punch in that. I'll lower my special defense, okay. We're just both setting up on each other. Set that down? Who comes out next? Wheezing! Uh, Weezing with Reflect. I don't feel that. I'm sorry. I think it's just going to be smarter to switch out for Harmony here. Weezing can't do much. At most, it's got Pain Split or Will-O-Wisp as its nasty moves. It's definitely a more stally Pokemon. Yeah, Sludge Bomb's not that dangerous on too many things. Our team's light screen wore off. That is fine. I'm just going to go for the Psy Chick. That's what Harmony is. She's the Psy Chick. Because she's like a girl, you know? Team's Reflect War off, Electros. I'll go with Jade. Yeah, we'll go with Jade. He's only got two Pokemon left, and I doubt it really matters. It's nice giving him the Electros so he has the Pokemon with no weakness on his team so that you'd really feel uh, how important Levitate can be as an ability. It's a great ability. I feel like a lot of the simple abilities that were introduced back in Gen 3 are among the best ones of all time. Sort of like how card games are, where the Black Lotus, or Bill, or Professor Oak, any of those cards that are around from the base set back when they were printing really simple card effects, those always tend to be the greatest cards of all time in a card game, and tend to, like, retain value really well as a result until they rotate out if they do. Take that. Are we gonna get our first level 70 in this fight, I just realized? We might. Gengar! No way are you gonna be able to stand up to one of these! <laughs> I might have to use one of those person berries I was just given in this very building if I get confused after only two turns. I did! Why would it be any different? Oh, I didn't have one. How close was I to getting that level up? Every Let's Play, there's always some time where I'm so close to leveling up and it hurts me. I thought it was completely prepared for anti-levitate tactics. In real battles, things would never go as well as you would think. Or maybe you're just that good. Let's go with the latter. I want to feel good about something. Well, how much experience points was it? Two! <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. You want to play it like that? We increased the number of trainers school to meet the demands of trainers who want to know more about Pokemon because they love them. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this just explains status conditions. We already know all about those because there was a trainer school in my hometown. Speaking of my hometown, you want to play it like that? That's where we're going. I know how we're going to end this. Mom, I'm... Bianca? Route 23 is mysterious Pokemon. Just by being near it, you can feel some kind of willpower. Best you go have a look for yourself. So you, she gives you hints on things after you've beaten Kuro. Thanks, Mom. I really needed to eat some steak and scoot up to bed after something like that. Now that we're rejuvenated. I am petty as hell. I need this. I'm going out under the first route of the game, and we're gonna go bop some poor unfortunate baby over the head so that we can get a level up. Any takers? Anyone? Come on, any of you wanna get mutilated by a dragon? There we go. Who's it gonna be? A Patrat, oh boy. Just because I dislike you so much, Patrat, I'm going to maim you in the meanest way possible. Enjoy the nuclear option. What? 
What? I knew experience points scale. I did think <laughs> I'm one experience point away. <laughs> okay, fine, Pearline. It's not as funny now that I go over my strongest move, so I'll go over my other strongest move. One experience point. Ding! Jade grew to level 70. I'm done. Next time on Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, we battle the Striat and City Gym Leader. See you guys then.